let's take a look at Godot. Alright, we find ourselves in Godot this time for the first part of my series where I look at a whole bunch of different engines. This first episode is going to be Godot and we're going to do multiple episodes on the same engine. And we're also going to do other engines in the future. Now, this is supposed to be my first impressions on how this all is going to work and basically how easy I'm going to be able to navigate this. Where I try to look at the engine without doing too much research beforehand. So I'm basically going in blind. I'm just trying out some stuff and only really looking up certain things if I can't figure it out in any other way. Hopefully this is going to be interesting to you and let's get started. So this is the first time when I actually opened the Godot engine and it actually asked me to open asset libraries over here. So those would be official examples. I'm going to choose to not do that because like I said, I want to just fr start fresh without knowing anything. And then just to see if I can find my way around this. This is how I personally like to do it. I just like to play around with it a little bit and then looking at examples at a later date. So let's just make a new project over here. So I navigate it to my folder when I select it. And this is going to be, uh, let's just do test project. That's going to be fine. We can have different renders over here. Let's take a look. There's some only advanced 3D can scale large complex scenes. Interesting. We also can do mobile, which is less advanced, and then compatibility. We're just going to do forward plus over here and we'll see. And indeed, Git is the correct one. So let's create an edit. So here we actually are. Okay, so this is this seems pretty nice. I can switch to 2D immediately, which is going to give me a, an interesting view right here. I wonder if I can also show the grid. I can show the grid. Okay, this okay. That, it's actually fine if you go to 100% over here, then the grid isn't too crazy. If you just zoom out, it just looks like a white blur, but that's okay. Okay, so this is actually pretty fine. So down here is my file system. I got my scene. We can basically switch to different types of scenes, right? I, I've heard that nodes is sort of one of those things that's quite important. So this would be the th the node 3D. And my question is, how can I go back to the node that I was already in? Oh, we want to create a root node. I understand. Okay, sorry. It's all good. So I want to create a 2D scene. Okay, that's my that's going to be my scene. Let's just say that's going to be okay. So this is my... Uh, my 2D scene, and I can now start creating stuff in there, I would assume. Select the resource in the file system to import. All right, let's create... Oh, we can just create scripts, resources, text files, folders. Okay, let's just... Uh, let's just then create a new resource. Let's see. Oh, boy, that's... This is pretty cool. Okay. So we can have, like, a bunch of different types of resources that we can create. What about a sprite? How can I get a sprite in sprite frames? Okay, that's definitely not what I was imagining. All right, let's just... I'm just going to try the following. I have a little sprite that I wanted to use. I'm just going to see what happens if I drag it in. So I can definitely add it. So there you go. So there is my 2D sprite added. Okay, that's pretty cool. We got a texture 2D. So far, this is very intuitive. So I, I'm not... I'm feeling pretty good about this. What if I just drag it into the scene? Well, oh, there you go. It actually adds it. That's pretty awesome. Okay, now this is not in um, the rendering mode I'm not a fan of. So let's actually take a look at whether or not I can, I can change that. Mode detect. No, that should be okay. Let's just continue how it looks right now. So like I said, this is definitely not a tutorial in the exact sense, right? This is sort of a, okay, I'm just discovering things here live, so to speak. Uh, but let's take a look. So now I would like to just add a script to it. So let's just make a new folder over here. I'm going to call this scripts. And I'm going to create a new script. We're going to just, we're just going to try this. This is a GD script, but I'm, yeah, we can also choose the C sharp language because that is a thing that you can do. So let's just try to do this as a player movement. It did say that, well, usually I'm going to put this in uppercase. No, that's fine. There's no class name. Let's just create it. Failed to create C sharp project. All right. That's, uh, I guess that's something. Let's double click that what's going to happen. Okay, so we are in the partial class right here and we get the two methods. So we get the ready method and the process method. So this seems, this is actually, I'm going to be real. I, I Because I'm coming in here completely blind, this feels very intuitive for me. This is the start method and this would be the update method, right? Once again, I'm speaking in Unity terms because I'm, I'm imagining that hopefully you watching and then also myself, we're coming from Unity. So this would be the... Well, the thing we're thinking about, uh, what happens if I start typing in? Okay, so because the, um, because the, okay, this is a resource. So this is going to be the scene. Okay, we're going to want to, yeah, we want to save the scene. That's fine. Uh, so the question here comes in at um, whether or not this is actually properly imported, because it just told me that the C-sharp project was not properly created. So this might be the case that there's no IntelliSense or like no, nothing basically happening. So I, I wouldn't even know what to do. Oh, so this would be the case. So there you go. Net SDKs, no SDKs found. Well, that's probably going to be why. Well, that's a little awkward. 
Well, for the purposes of this video, we're then just going to try to do this in the Godot script over here in the other scripting language. So instead of C sharp, we're going to do this in GD script. And then in the second video, we're just going to try this in C sharp after that. So that's going to be the player.gd. And this hopefully should add no issues over here. There you go. So the general idea here is probably the same, right? Well, it is. However, this time I'm getting some suggestions. So that's pretty good over here. So let's see if I can somehow get the output over here. So this would be, I would imagine it's like an output class or something like that. Animation output, mm, maybe a console or a console or a right line, a line, linear line edit. Print debug. Hello. Save this and let's play. I want to select the current scene as a debug project. Nothing has been output. Oh, yeah, of course. I haven't put this script on anything. Of course, it wouldn't output anything. Okay, so I'm a little bit, I, I'm, I'm still a little bit unsure when I have this open, how I can go back to my, to my scene view. That's a little bit um, weird. Like, this doesn't, this is just a back. This just closes that. Because right now the scene is open, but I... Oh, wait. Oh, so we go do this. Okay. Fully understood. All right. So this would be the differences in... So everything is the scene view, but you can change it between the 2D, the 3D and script. And then also there's an asset lib over here, which is probably going to be like pretty cool. But let's just not... Let's just first of all do this. So another question is, if I were to then add a script over here, that's just going to be the... Let's see. So scripts node. So can I add the player script just like on the player somehow or... Okay, so I've added the script right here just randomly. Add metadata. Ooh, okay. This is pretty cool. I understand. So you can basically just add certain metadata over here so that each quote unquote game object, I would assume that this is a node, right? So a game object would be a node that you can just add some metadata to it. So it can just basically have all sorts of different uh, values over here stored in that. That's actually pretty freaking cool. I like that, that that's that's on the quote unquote, once again, game object level instead of this in the script level. But now I've added the script over here. I'm going to save it and we're going to see if I were to go over here. Hello. So it does output this. Of course, the output here is in print debug. So I would assume it's probably just print that you can do a normal output at. I would I would assume that that's uh, going to be a normal output without, you know, weirdness over here. And it is. All right. Awesome. Now, now the question is, if I were to change the position over here to zero, zero, is it, am I going to see something as well? Oh, I can actually see it at the very top over there. It's very, very small. Can you see it? It's right there. It's right there in the in the top left corner. If I can nope, that's going to be the same size always. OK, let's just then make this like way bigger. There you go. So it should actually be down here that I see. So uh, now it should be much bigger. There you go. Okay, that's something. Okay, I understand. Now, the real question is, though, how can I know what the scene sees, right? That, so that will be the next sort of thing to think about or to figure out. Let's first of all make this just a little bit smaller. I feel like there's a like little bit of a blue outline here, right? Ah, so there's, okay, the camera. Let me just get that out of here. Okay, so this is blue outline, I would say. So I would be roughly-ish in the middle over here. Yeah, okay. So that's what's going to be shown on the on the on the output. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now, to be honest, I just want to see if I can figure out without looking at anything if I some input and output. That's pretty much all I want to look at. So in theory, right, quote every frame. Fair enough. So then we would probably want to do an if statement over here. Does this need something? Is there an input? There is an input class, so we get an input action pressed. Oh boy, that's this is okay. This feels pretty nice. This is pretty cool. And we get some suggestions over here. So this is all UI. So I don't think that that's quite what I want then. Key, we probably want to be key. Is key pressed? And then we get all of these keys. So then we can say key and let's do a W. How about that? So if key is pressed, and then this is probably an indent language, right? I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to need quotation, uh, curly brackets rather. And then maybe just print something out. Let's, how about that? How, how about we just try that? Okay, so that doesn't quite do it. Um, if input expected a colon after. Ah, there we go. All right. That's, that's how you do it. All right. Okay. I feel pretty good about that. So now if I press W, hello should be output in the, in the scene. And it is. So I can just hold it and it's getting output constantly. Okay, this is really cool. So far, I'm, I'm liking this. I, I like the, this is actually fairly similar, all things considered. My absolute first impressions is this is, this is going to be absolutely awesome. I can probably reference the node, right? So I can probably reference myself, right? So this would be node and then the, w, the dot would probably reference 
the quote-unquote game object or the node that I am attached to. So now the question is, what is the transform called? If I were to do this, this is the, it's not the offset actually, it is the tra it is a transform. So this would be a node 2D. So how else can I reference uh, self? That makes actually, that's, that actually, you know what? That actually makes a lot of sense. And then let's see, is there like a transform? There is not, is there a position? Uh, it might be uppercase actually. There is no, does not seem like that is the case. Child, get child of index? No, that's not right. It doesn't give me an error, so I'm not, I'm unsure if you can just go like inside of that, like that, uh, plus equals five. All right. I mean, what the heck? Let's just see. Um, no. Invalid index position based on transform 2D. So he does get the transform 2D by saying self the transform. It's a bit of a shame that I, 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 I'm not getting that as a, as a, um, suggestion right here i mean it feels like a little bit of a of a hindrance in the um in the workflow in my opinion but okay that's fine count and draw from the future here and i've actually found out the reason why i can't do self dot transform over here and it doesn't like show me any suggestions the reason is because we're extending from node however to actually see this properly we want to extend from node to d and all of a sudden if i do self dot transform you can see all of a sudden i have the transform available and i even have the translated the translated local i have all of the functions available that i would expect here to be there so that is one thing I just wanted to quickly interject over here. The entire structure of Godot gets more and more clear as I continue with this. But let's continue with me being confused for a little bit. So at that point, position. No, it's a property position. So I don't, I mean, get property, but like, honestly. Okay, go, go all the way back. Let's just go all the way back. Um, Transform dot, I mean, does the tra translate might work? That is a method that exists. Uh, vector three. Dot, um, no, vector, wait, is this, so vector 3 dot new, no, dot 1, dot up, oh, it does work, actually, no way, that, is this going to work? <laughs> that would be crazy, it does not, non-existent function, translate, um, it might be called translate with an uppercase T, it is not, I mean, listen, okay, it was worth a try, in my opinion, Okay, so I looked it up because I can I can wander in front of a wall for a, an hour, but it apparently is called translated and it needs a vector two over here, so we can use vector two dot up. And now, well, nothing is happening. Now my theory on this is probably that this just returns a the transform. So you would want to set the current transform to transform the translated because translated it sort of implies to me that it returns a transform, and we can also get rid of the uh, this guy over here. But now I should be moving. That is crazy! I did it! I moved a character up over here. Let's just quickly do it for all four directions. W, A, S, and D. And then this is going to be left. And this is going to be right. No, oh, sorry, this is down. And this is going to be right. Absolutely. And now, I have a movement script. Okay, so that is pretty freaking cool. And as a, like I said, as a first-time view ever of Godot. I've never looked at it before. I've looked up barely anything. So far, I do really like this. Um, one thing that's kind of weird is that the, when I do self dot, right, it doesn't give me the transform as a possible option, which is a little bit of, I don't know quite how, how, to, how to do that, how to feel about that. And also when the, I do have the transform, it doesn't give me any suggestions for the functions that are basically like available on that particular uh, part of the node. But apart from that, so far as a, like I said, as a first view, like the first, first 30 minutes of looking at this, I am enjoying myself. This is, this is pretty cool. This is not too far away from what I would expect. Now, obviously, this is going to be completely different as we go into more complicated things. But as a first level look at my first impressions... I really like it. So this is going to be the first episode. In the next episode, we're definitely going to take a look at the C Sharp portion as well. I'm going to be installing the .NET framework properly. And then we'll see what else we can uh, find over here with Godot. Uh, so far, I, this is this is pretty cool. So catch the left video for the next Godot part in this series. And catch the right one for a completely different engine, which we're also going to take a look at. Hope to see you in one of those. So, yeah.